She's still laughing. (laughs) (laughs) That's so funny. Welcome to Five Lemons Left. We're the real stuff. The lemons making lemonade. So pucker up because we're going to be discussing our life's lessons and the nitty gritty details of our spiritual journeys. Hey y'all, I'm Amanda. And I'm Drusilla. I'm Melissa. Hello, this is Morgan. And I'm Penny. Welcome to our podcast today. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome, everybody. Welcome to episode number 67. Today, we are talking about resurrection. We're talking about resurrection energy, what it means in our life, what it means as it applies to Jesus and how we bring that into our lives. And we're inviting you to think about what it means in your life. What does resurrection mean to you? I'm going to start us off by reading something from the Course in Miracles. It is from the Manual for Teachers, and it's titled, What is Resurrection? Very simply, the resurrection is the overcoming or surmounting of death. It is the reawakening or rebirth, a change of mind about the meaning of the world. It is the acceptance of the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the world's purpose and the acceptance of the atonement for one's self. That's the beginning, the opening lines, and it just means so much. Mm. Yeah. 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 So what does it mean to you? What does the resurrection mean to you? And how do you separate it? Or how do you integrate it into your life or not? Morgan, I think you were saying like it it only applies to Jesus. Or was that you, Drisola? I can't remember. (laughs) Well, Morgan explained it as it applied to it in a sense. So I'll let I'll let Morgan just, you know, reiterate what, how she described it. Okay. Well, it's not necessarily that I think it only applies to Jesus. I just think like, um, Jesus demonstrated it. And most of us, the five of us here, at least haven't had that transcendental transcending the limitations of the body experience yet. So my understanding is that really like the way Jesus was able to resurrect, resurrect from the dead is that he recognized that there is no death. And he knew that with every fiber of his being, if you will, or with every, with every, with every bit of his being, he knew that he was not a body. He was not limited by death, that death wasn't real. And when you, when you're at that level of awareness and, and knowing of your true nature, then you are at one with God. And so you have the power of God. And so you can manufacture a body, you can make spoons float in the air. I mean, you can manipulate matter and do, you know, all these Uh, what we might say magical things or supernatural things, because it's nothing when you you're playing with kids toys, it might even say in a course in miracles somewhere like, so anyway, that's what I think of as the the resurrection, whereas the church um, portrays it as this um, special thing that only this one chosen child of God is capable of. So that we'll all, um, not know our true nature and not like to keep us like in the dark about our true potential and our true nature. Um, But my understanding from A Course in Miracles is that Jesus is just our elder brother and he came as like a way shower and like we're all capable of experiencing that same uh, resurrection energy and and having that transcendence of the, the body and yeah, 
I'm talking in circles now. Oh, I think you get great. what I'm trying to say. <laughs> that was great, great Morgan. Yeah. I I totally follow that. And it's um it's exactly how I I believe um and how the word resurrection um resonates with me. And that could have to do with my strong religious background. Um and to just probably just to add on, because I don't need to reiterate anything you said, um, is that I do feel that we all will experience resurrection. And therefore, as as our spirit selves, that truly never dies, it doesn't have a beginning and doesn't have an end that we continue to come and have earth experiences until we are at a place of resurrecting, which a part of the resurrection, as far as I understand it, is to reach atonement, which is the at one ment And we there can't be an atonement until we all have resurrected, is my understanding. So, and as being all brothers and sisters of Christ, that is the that is the purpose of the Holy Spirit, which is mentioned in the definition of the resurrection. And that that is the journey that we're all on. And that's why we are as, as teachers of God, in which I think that's what all of us, you know, claim to be, um, is that our, our um, journeys in this earth life is to bring forth other sisters and brothers with us for the attainment of the resurrection towards the um, at one moment or atonement. Um, that's what I understand for the resurrection. And I do feel that we are all, um, we have the same power, abilities and capabilities of Christ, our brother. And it's just a matter of awakening. Some of us, you know, as we can see and sense that some of us awakening faster than others. Um, but the journey is all the same. There is no time anyways. Um, mm -hmm. So we will all resurrect as one, which is the atonement. That's my understanding. So anything that's <laughs> kind of outside of that, I struggle. I can read what the course says about um, anything that dies and that there is a process but when I take time out of the equation, it just means that there was actually never a separation, right? So hence, there is no time, there is no process. And so it just kind of gets a little crazy for me to start <laughs> thinking about it in, in increments or different parts of it. So yeah, that's that's all I have to say on that for now. Mm. Well, here's a question out of left field then. So do you think that Jesus was like born able to resurrect or did he have to practice resurrection in his everyday life to be able to do that? Yes. So from, from my understanding, that's just my interpretation, is that um, he was born on earth of a woman, not of a, a father, right? Not of a earthly father, which means he came to earth as spirit, pure spirit, and always remained as spirit, which is how he was able to always see us human beings in their Christ-like state. Like he never saw, he wasn't necessarily healing a person. He was healing their thoughts about themselves, right? Because he already saw them as whole and perfect, right? He didn't raise Lazarus from the dead. Lazarus was never dead. So he was already seeing in the Christ vision from the time he was here, from, you know, the duration of his life on earth, walking the earth. So no, I don't think it was a process. Oh, that's interesting. I don't know what actually happened. And I feel the comfort in, in believing that Jesus, the man had to learn how to do that. Right. Cause if 
I've always believed if Jesus could do it, I could do it. Cause right. We're all the same. We're all one. So that's interesting. A different little version of that. Well, have you, have you ever read the Gary Renard book, the lifetimes when Jesus and Buddha knew each other? Oh, no, uh -uh. it's good. It's really good. So in the book, um, it talks about um, the different lifetimes that uh, Buddha and Jesus were incarnated at the same time and were in each other's inner circle. And of course, they weren't named Buddha or Jesus, but they, that's just the title of the book for our our understanding. Um, but it says in that book that like, like Jesus incarnated several times, you know, probably hundreds of times, maybe thousands of times, but he, even from the beginning of his incarnations, he already had like a head start. He already had this skepticism about the nature of reality and the nature of the world. So um, he was like a more advanced student and required fewer incarnations, if you will. And, um, but yeah, so I, I personally believe that he, it says in the Bible that he was both fully human and fully God. Well, that is an available potential for all of us to have mm -hmm. that experience. It's like being in the world, but not of the world. Like, so I think as long as he was in a body, he was probably experiencing polarity and, and duality and just also having this like constant, like radar focus awareness of the truth. Like his North star was just like hyper focused and hyper clear. And he was just, you know, an, a very advanced, uh, very advanced on his journey. And so it was just able to cut through the density quicker and easily and, I don't know. That's my, that's my interpretation and my guess, but of course it's all just <laughs> conjecture hypothesis. I have a, I have a left field. Okay. Ooh, I love here. those. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Bring it on, Melissa. Okay. I feel closer to the resurrection, the further away I get from Christianity. Ooh, mm. tell more, say okay. more. Melissa. Yeah. I agree. I feel like um, I really, I grew up Catholic. I've read the Bible. I've studied the Bible. And I do not believe the Bible. I do not believe word for word. I'm not really into the whole, like, um, non-evidence-based. Mm -hmm. um, what people think are facts in the Bible. Okay. Um, I do, however, believe that it's teaching for us. It's their parables, their teaching, their examples. And the Bible says when Jesus resurrected, he said his first words were peace unto you. And so that to me means more than just this, you know, um, all the, all the um, rituals we've made around Easter and resurrection. I also feel like it was sim symbolically meant to show us that life goes on, that mm -hmm. life and there's peace and we can ex feel peace and there's life beyond what we see today. And I feel like for me, my experience with Christianity has been a lot of separation, has been there's the priest and then there's the people there's the God. And then there's the priest and the people there's mm -hmm. separation. We are not, we're, we're lower. There's a hierarchy hierarchy where we're always trying to get there. Um, and since I've left the, that teaching, I feel more like, um, oneness, more mm. peace and oneness, more peace in a second chance of which is a resurrection, a second chance of being able to see life um, as one, us as one, and us without a beginning and without an end. And 
the it's also helped me um to get out of this judgment of i'm uh I've earned it. You haven't earned it. You haven't earned it. That person has earned it. Um, A lot of judgment about resurrection or life after death or heaven and hell and all, it's just all made for separation in my estimation. And so um, by moving away from the teaching, I see um, more perfection in people, less judgment, more commonality. And, um, and that we do have heaven on earth and that there is an afterlife and that um, things, it's not just some, um, a God who gets to do that and have Mm -hmm. peace and peace unto us. Mm. Yeah. I like that. beautiful. Melissa. Mm -hmm. So what was going through my mind, question (laughs) is, do you do you see it as a um when I say it religion, any I guess organized religion, do you see that it served a purpose and you had that experience and therefore you are more awake now versus someone who has never been exposed? And could they go directly to where you are now? You get what I'm saying? Kind of like Morgan described it as Jesus having all of these, you know, lives, different lives, reincarnations and getting to the awareness. That's that's the same understanding I have. And so with that being said, do you not think that religion, just like for Jesus in one of his incarnations may have served to catapult him to the level of resurrection so do you get the question yes i I do i do think this is uh, my truth i don't think this is everyone's truth i also think that the teachings and even even possibly the concrete literal uh, interpretation of the Bible, maybe some people's way there. Mm-hmm. I'm not judging. Uh, for me, and how I was raised within a Christian based religion, I feel so much more inclusive now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't believe the Bibles literally. Um, but I am sure that's a way to peace and a peaceful afterlife and a peaceful here for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't. Th- I don't think my interpretation is better or I'm like more evolved. I think it is just how I see it. It's better for you. Yes. And I I like what you said about. Um, I don't know, at something, oh, you said the non-evidence-based approach, like just taking everything on faith and trust and, and, and faith and trust is a lofty um, aim. And I like to operate my life on faith and trust, but a lot of times the, the church I find can weaponize that if um, any inquisitive minds are questioning some teaching of the church, like, oh, you just have to have faith about that or, you know, whatever. It's just kind of like a way to say, we don't know how, uh, how to resolve that seeming contradiction in the Bible. So you just have to take it on faith. And that's one thing that really strongly and powerfully drew me to A Course in Miracles, because it says like, God is logical and, and reasonable and sense like it makes sense. It's not confusing. It's not convoluted. It's not contradicting itself. It's all saying things like, it's all saying the same thing over and over and over again. And nothing on page 324 is contradicting anything on page four. You know what I mean? Like it all makes sense. And like, yeah, why would God not make sense and be logical? I mean, 
I don't, <laughs> I don't know. And I like that, like even like it invites you in A Course in Miracles to prove that these things work. Like, it's not like you're testing God and that's a sin and you should be ashamed of that. Like, there's no tricks here. There's no games being played. Like, it's just, this is the truth. It's very easy to understand. We're not trying to confuse you or complicate things or make God elusive and not knowable and not understandable. And he's not the God of love on one page and the God who's going to strike you down to hell on the next page. So anyway, that's just when you said the whole non-evidence based thing, that's what it made me think of. That was a very important piece of me, like really finding my home in A Course in Miracles. Well, and we talk about Jesus, but there are millions and millions of people who don't believe in Jesus. And so do they not get the res the the benefit of the resurrection? You know what I mean? Like, um, I think the Bible was written for pe- certain groups of people to follow that way. And um, Course of Miracles was written with a Christian interpretation. Um, and like, frankly, I don't believe there's one little one old guy spirit up there being reasonable i just don't think that that's how it is i think the beat for me the beauty of life is that we're one big mm-hmm. oneness and that but there's order in the universe there's order it, that's you know what i mean that's what i mean not yes yeah. yeah. so melissa and let me ask lunch? you that oh. no you go ahead amanda um I said, yeah, <laughs> Melissa, you said that, um, so, um, on, you know, something like, you know, do only the Christians get the benefit of the resurrection. I, and I would just love to hear your personal meaning of what the resurrection is. I, again, I think that it is more of a symbol of life after what we see here and that there is life after death and that there is beauty and peace here on earth and life after death. And that is for everyone. Thank you. Thank you for doing this. Yeah. And sorry, Drusilla, we were talking at the same time. So no, it's, it's, it's fine. I just wanted to, um, and now I, Gosh, I can't remember if it was based on Morgan or Melissa, but I think it was both. And Morgan was kind of reiterating Melissa, but uh, faith, we have to go back to that. I think what I heard was that Christianity or religion is based on that. And the course is not heavily based on that or, but it actually really is. And I think that the gist of the resurrection to my understanding is that exactly that you're putting faith in things outside of what you see, taste, smell here. And that is the only way to experience the resurrection. Doesn't have to be through any type of religion, any dogma, any principles, not even the course but to understand and know yourself as spirit, not as flesh. So that is faith because you can't experience it first. You have to have the faith in order to experience it. And that's what faith is. So Mm -hmm. I don't think you could have any of this without faith. Do you remind me of that Michael Beckwith quote? Is it Michael Beckwith? When you believe more in what you don't see than what you do see, then you will see what you don't see and you won't see what you do. See. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, that's a yes. great quote. <laughs> yes. It's a fun one to say out loud too. I did it really well. Yeah. I want to hear from Penny. Yeah. But I also want to say what happens before the resurrection that God died for our sins or Jesus died for our sins. 
And that may also put a wrench in things for me. (laughs) So um, just saying. (laughs) Um, (laughs) So if we back up a little bit, you know. Yeah, the crucifixion is a whole different ball of wax, right? right. A whole different topic. My, gosh, my understanding of that and how I apply it to even you know, understanding the course in and of itself is that just like you said earlier, Melissa, it's about the symbolizing that our sins do not mean anything because we still can have a human life and experience those things and reach the atonement. It's basically what it symbolizes as far as what I can understand. Yeah, just a symbol. Mm. Because he's demonstrating, right? This happened three days later, still have the holes in my hands and I am still among us, among, you know, you people at the time. Um, Yeah, so just a symbol of that, that there is, there's, if there's no death, then there is no sin either. So Penny, we'd love to hear from you. I have nothing to add. (laughs) (laughs) I, you know, I honestly, I have to really be honest with you. I don't really think about resurrection much. Mm -hmm. I mean, I looked up the definitions and, there's lots of um, ways that A Course in Miracles defines it that I really like, um, that we can have a resurrection in our life every day. We can resurrect how we, you know, how we do things in our life. We can make some small changes and big change, you know, big things can happen in our life that we can, you know, change things up and that could be a resurrection. And mm-hmm. so I, yeah, it, it's, um, you guys are also dang deep for me that <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like going into comparing myself. Like I don't have those same thoughts as you. <laughs> so, that last week, wasn't that last week's podcast? Yeah. Compare and despair. <laughs> oh yeah. Compare and despair. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I'm trying not to despair. Oh, good. I want to pivot to Amanda's thoughts on the resurrection because I I want to hear that and I have a, a, a feeling about the smaller opportunities to recognize that there can be life and death in our human experience and yeah. the giving up attachments to things. Yeah. So when I read this section, I immediate my mind went to Like, how does it apply to me personally? Just like Penny was just saying, like, what are the things that I'm doing every day? What am I letting die in my life to make room for resurrection, resurrected energy? What am I letting go of to allow more love in my life? So that's the way that I'm thinking about it. And um, an example came up today that... um, Like I'm really making an effort to let go of changing, fixing, trying to make different my husband, right? Mm. Like he is his own being. He has his own thing going. And my, see, my willingness is to allow, is to, not I can't even think of the words like it's such a yeah. huge <laughs> concept that's not really in the social norm right is to completely accept someone how they are right that is just such a not normal yeah <laughs> <It's> not <laughs> normal people it's not and so my opportunity for resurrection is just to accept that and to look at him as God right? To see him as perfect. So that is a resurrection that I'm, that I can have in my life now. And that just 
an example just came up today because, you know, this is real life and we're married and he okay. did something that I was like, wait, that's not what we thought was going on. What I thought, not we. <laughs> <laughs> so that's an example of like just every day, letting something go every day, yeah. letting go of hate, like really, like, I just don't want to hate anybody anymore. I don't want that energy in my life. And I think Jesus would want that. No, right. I mean, Jesus would want those little changes in your life. There's no, there are no little changes according to a person. There's no level of difficulty and miracles and the lessons the past few days and the workbook have been about my grievances, hide the light of the world in me, my holding grievances as an attack on God's plan for salvation. And I've been really working with that too. Like sometimes I just, the lesson just goes right over my head in one ear, out the other. And I go about my day and just barely pay attention to it. But there've been a couple of times when I've remembered, like when I was triggered by someone, usually my husband, (laughs) and I remembered, I remembered like, if I'm holding on to this grievance, then I'm imprisoning him to a body and I'm imprisoning myself. Yes. And I instead want to remember the truth that he's not a body, that he's eternal spirit, that he's my savior. He's my brother. Like he's not out to get me. And he's here to help me wake up from this dream. And, you know, sometimes the little ego in me is still, yeah, but he did this. And, you know, it's not always so easy, but it, it just remembering those lessons has been helpful for me this week. I've had a few little mini resurrections of remembering that <laughs> exactly. he's it's not a body and I'm not a body. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's practicing, right? Like, you know, it's, it's a practicing resurrection. It's letting mm-hmm. go of how we are currently seeing the world to let that be replaced with unconditional love. Yeah. Yeah. Yesterday I had an experience with my brother and he was very upset about something and I attempted to help him <laughs> look at it a different I'm way <laughs> because it's yes, right? Except change it. <laughs> Either you're so kind. <laughs> <laughs> but it came down to is I just needed to to share compassion and love with him and know that everything that he was going through was just a cry for love. Mm. And the other person he was upset up was upset with was just a cry for love. And if I can look at it and have compassion for it, life just can be so much easier. Yes. Yeah. So I I have a story to share and the end is like really funny. So just stick. Oh, good. (laughs) So I think you all have heard me um, being in that we're all in the um, power of love ministry community explain about the weekend I had where I just surrendered all. I mean, I spent the whole weekend just praying and and fasting because I was going through so much with my husband and stepdaughter at the time. And I had just found the Course in Miracles and I just was relentless in my pursuit of seeing the face of God and understanding my purpose. And um, at the end, of the weekend, which on Sunday, when I woke up, well, let me back up a little because I guess it's probably important for me to say on that Saturday night, I had an experience that was similar to a dream, but I knew it wasn't a dream. And I released um, what I would call some butterfly-like things from my body out of my mouth. Mm. And then I had an experience of something that would, um, how would I describe it? Like a, a beam of light smoke, like a white substance that was poured into my body. And so when I woke up on Sunday morning, I, I just felt like I was in a whole new house and I walked outside And the sun was almost so bright that I couldn't even look at it. And the grass had just just such perfection and color and texture, things that I had not ever seen before. 
And when my husband came home, he was away for the weekend. And when he came home, he just looked at me and was like, oh my God, what happened to you over the weekend? And I said, I don't know. I think I had a healing. And, you know, and that's all I could say. And I was explaining this story in one of Jennifer's classes. And this gentleman that was listening um, said to me at the end of the story, he said, and on the third day she rose. (laughs) (laughs) did have a resurrection. Yeah. So it's like, and I'm, and I'm sitting here today and I'm just like that word, even when he said it, it, it just felt so wrong to be described. And I think that's more of, you know, like I said, my religious upbringing, that that yeah. word is preserved, you know, for this one person, Jesus Christ and his whole experience. And, um, but now I, I do feel like that was an awakening um for sure and um once you reach a a certain level of awakening you can never go back beyond that space right you can only just go back so far so in a sense i do agree that those are are resurrections um but yeah i do still just struggle with that that word being applicable to what would be another word that you would use, Drusilla, if you don't are awakening? I, I just awakening. used awakening to describe mm-hmm. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And of course, a miracle says words are but symbols of symbols. Exactly. And like yep. whatever makes anybody uncomfortable, a lot of people have discomfort with the language of God and Jesus and the the use of the masculine in a course in miracles. So, you know, just mm-hmm. People make even the word awakening, right? Yeah. People have yeah. <laughs> just words. So work with what is comfortable with you, where you Resonates, meet with yeah. the least resistance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 So That's are, a beautiful story, Drusilla. Yeah. yeah. So we are coming towards the end of our time. And um, one of the things that's big that um, I read at the very beginning was changing our mind about the world. Hmm. So what is it that you, that we think that you think that like, how do we change our mind about the world to bring atonement, to bring at one moment, to bring awakening, to to bring that resurrection energy. What do you think? I mean, all you need is love. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say the love. same thing. Love, oh, wow. love. love. choosing love. love every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every, every time. Situation. Wouldn't every that be beautiful? Time. So be even, beautiful? even <laughs> if someone you don't like with on the TV, is that what you're saying? Even oh, like yes. everything. <sighs> yes. They, need a, they probably even need more love. Yeah. Yes, they do. I'm sure <laughs> that would be an awakening in your mind and your behavior, a new way of doing things, mm-hmm. just seeing through the eyes of love. Mm-hmm. I think we become unbotherable, right? Yeah, because you remember that none of it is freaking real. So why would it upset me if this clown politician is doing things that I perceive <laughs> are? <laughs> what are you are clownish, right? <laughs> yeah, are clownish. Like, why would I let that disturb me or ruffle my feathers when I know it's all just a dream? And Penny, I didn't hear what you said. Two two people were talking at once, so I didn't hear what you said. I don't know what I said now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> even better. <laughs> I I think with it being a holographic teaching and a holographic universe, like so many of these concepts are the same thing, just different ways of saying the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, the resurrection and the awakening and miracles and forgiveness and love, like it's really all the same thing. Yeah. And to make it more understandable for everyone is just, is love. Yeah. If some, if one of those doesn't resonate with you, then pick one that does. And it's the same thing as the others. You don't have to understand Mm -hmm. all five. Like Drusilla is not really 
feeling the resurrection as applicable in her own life necessarily, but she can work with forgiveness or salvation or atonement or, you know, whatever. So it's just, it all gets us there. It does. Yeah, because the opinions expressed here were strictly those of the individual. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to have to put a disclaimer on this episode. No, we are going to have to disclaim me. this episode. <laughs> well, this is probably really good because, uh, you know, we kind of covered the gamut. I think we can probably say we represent a, a lot of people and all the things that we've had to say, you know, mm-hmm. it's letting go of the past and the judgments and the grievances and you know, that's the weight of it all. And just that's the only way to ascend, right? Is to to let go of the weight of our thoughts and grievances of the past. Yeah. I think the bottom line from my post that I've created is uh, we can all benefit from the resurrection. Yes. And us without a beginning or an end is Ooh, what that's a good I one. Loved. Yeah. And then resurrection means awakening from the dream of separation. And then truly just, oh, you have yeah, a lot. And, and then just truly, you know, peace onto you. Life goes on and we're all one. Oneness is the answer. Yeah. Yes. You were inspired to say yes. that. posted. She yeah. went on. Yeah. Woo-hoo. Girlfriends, you guys gave it to me. All of it. <laughs> So thank you all for listening today to our our episode 67 on the resurrection and what it means to each of us. It's um, it's fun uh, to be stretched out of our comfort zone sometimes and to look at things a little differently and to see it from through somebody else's um, vision. And so I, I, we appreciate you all being here. And I have a question for you, beautiful ladies. Is there any announcements, anything that's coming up for you that you'd like to share with our listeners? Mm. On March 24th, um, I'm going to be co-facilitating with Linda and Angela with two other beautiful beings um, and myself, the Jennifer's in my self-sabotage challenge. It's a six week challenge. So there's three of us that are co-facilitating and that starts on March 24th. And how do our listeners uh, register for that? Um, JenniferHadley.com and you can go to classes and it's there. And it's uh, end my self sabotage challenge. Ooh, that sounds exciting, Amanda. Thank you for bringing that to the masses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, really appreciate it. Anybody else? Mm, I think by the time this episode airs, I will be in the midst of my retreat. So hey. I can no longer promote that because it'll, it'll be happening. <laughs> well, wow. It's airing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we're sending you really great energy Mm -hmm. um, as we're talking right now, as your retreat is unfolding right in front of us. Yeah. Beautiful. I will, I will put this out there. We're doing me and a couple of the um, girls here in the Puerto Viejo, Costa Rica community are doing a 12 class Kundalini yoga series based around David Hawkins map of consciousness. yeah we would like to maybe bring it to an online course at some point in the future so just putting it out there to gauge interest so if anybody's interested in something like that and wants to learn more you can shoot me an email morgan at lovelightmorgan.com wow that sounds really (laughs) inspiring Morgan. (laughs) really fun well thank you all for listening today we truly truly appreciate you You can like us at social media platforms. You can listen to us on YouTube. You can watch us on YouTube. (laughs) You can also go to fivelemonslaughing.com and you can leave us comments and reviews and all that good stuff. So thank you again and have a wonderful rest of your week and keep laughing. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you.